welcome to Delivering Miracles, a podcast to teach women like you tips and strategies on how you can have a safer pregnancy so you can bring home a healthy baby. I'm your host and your high-risk pregnancy expert, Farijat Deshpande. I can't wait to chat with you. Not too long ago, a friend of mine who delivered her son at 34 weeks was talking to me. She was on maternity leave for some time through the couple weeks that he was in the NICU and then for several weeks afterwards when he came home. And she was getting ready to go back to work. And as is the case for so many women who have to go back to work after having a baby, she was worried. You know, she was sad that she was going to miss out on time with her son. She was going to miss the time that they had bonding together for the last so many weeks. She was, you know, going to be sad that she wasn't going to see him every second of every day like she had before. But there was another element to what she was saying that really struck me, which is that she was really, really anxious. And she actually had been feeling really anxious for a really long time. And I'll never forget what she told me. She was saying, well, my son's going to stay with my mom. She's here with us and she's going to be he's, he, he's going to be staying with her. So we don't have to get a nanny or put him in daycare or anything, which was great. But I'm terrified of her watching him and taking care of him. Which stood out to me because usually a lot of women feel comfortable with their mothers taking care of their child. Usually, not always. I I understand that, not always. So I wanted to know a little more. I didn't quite understand what she was talking about. And she said, I'm just imagining all worst case scenarios. I'm imagining him, I'm imagining her not buckling him in properly in his car seat when they go driving somewhere. I'm imagining her not feeding him enough. I'm imagining her forgetting to wake him up after a nap or forgetting to change his diaper or what if he falls out of his rock and play and I'm just imagining all these horrible things that could happen and she she followed that up with I know she can take care of children she she took care of me and my siblings like obviously she can take care of children and I trust her but I'm just terrified that something's bad is going to happen and I just don't feel comfortable like we had her come over the weekend before and they they actually watched her put the the baby in the car seat in the car and in the stroller just to make sure that she had done everything right and and my friend was just talking and as she was talking her breath was getting faster and she was flushed in her face and I could tell she was just getting really worked up and really anxious and it occurred to me that we don't talk about this experience enough you know thanks to so much push in research and legislation and so many celebrities coming out like Chrissy Teigen and Adele talking about postpartum depression postpartum depression is taking a lot more space in media it's getting a lot more attention than before And considering that a significant number of women experience postpartum depression, it's not just once in a while, it's something close to 600,000 women a year live with postpartum depression. And so it is about time that we get attention on this. But, But what we're missing is what something my friend is going through or, and, and something that Even more women than the 600,000 a year who struggle with postpartum depression are going through, and that's postpartum anxiety. There is a ton of research that is out there that has shown that actually postpartum anxiety is even more common than postpartum depression, but we don't talk about it. Nobody labels it. Nobody names it. Nobody shares their experiences of it. Doctors don't know to ask about it. They start, they've just now barely started asking about postpartum depression 
Nobody's checking for anxiety. And so there's so many women like my friend who feel like they're going crazy because they are struggling to find some kind of understanding of why they can't trust otherwise trustworthy people in their life, why they keep imagining the worst case scenarios, why they can't sleep at night, why they have constant worry that in their gut feels more than just standard mom worry. And so today I want to talk to you about this postpartum experience that we call postpartum anxiety because it's real and it affects a lot of women And I want you to know that you can get in control of it quite quickly so that it doesn't impact your experience being a mom to your little miracle. Postpartum anxiety is something that needs to be taken seriously because it can affect how well you bond with your baby. It can affect how well you can care for your baby. And the stress of it all can affect your healing physically and emotionally after a pregnancy, even if it was a typical pregnancy and a typical delivery. Typical meaning non-complicated, right? And it can affect your milk supply. So this is really serious. This is impacting you and it's impacting your baby, okay? What I want you to know about it is that If you have had a typical pregnancy or a non-complicated delivery, you can still experience postpartum anxiety, okay? But if you went through a high-risk pregnancy or you delivered preterm or you had some kind of a traumatic experience around your delivery or any combination of those things, you are at really high risk of developing postpartum anxiety. And considering that nobody's checking on it or asking about it, there's not it's not built into your postpartum checks anywhere, I need you to know this information. I need you to be prepared for it so that you can prevent it. Or if you are experiencing it, you know exactly what you need to do to help yourself because you can, you absolutely can. And it doesn't necessarily mean medication, okay? Sometimes it does, but it doesn't necessarily. So here's what I want you to know about postpartum anxiety. Having postpartum anxiety, number one, does not mean that you have a clinical mental health issue. Anxiety lies on a spectrum, okay? So most new moms, especially if you're a first-time mom, are going to feel some anxiety. That just happens, okay? Okay worrying about whether your baby's going to be safe, your baby's eating enough or sleeping enough, are you producing enough milk, are you doing a good enough job as a mom? Those are all normal, common responses to motherhood. If they become disruptive to your life, if they are consuming your thoughts, if you're not able to relax or really let those go or shut those off when you know it's getting too far, then yeah, then I would say it's time to intervene and kind of figure out how to how to curb those but for the most part that you're having those thoughts is not necessarily a bad thing there that's not necessarily something that's wrong with you okay not that anything is ever wrong with you but that doesn't mean it's pathological is what I'm saying it's very normal very common to have these kinds of thoughts about is my baby growing okay is my baby sleeping enough is my baby you know getting enough milk when I'm trying to breastfeed all those thoughts are very very common especially in the early days right But as I mentioned earlier, if it starts to consume you every second of every day, if it prevents you from sleeping, if it's impacting your ability to eat, if if it's impacting your decisions in life, for example, I'm so worried that something's going to happen to my baby that I don't want to get in the car or drive anywhere, or I am so worried that my baby's not eating enough that I'm just going to sit here and nurse for four hours even if that means I don't eat or drink or something. I mean, I'm giving I'm giving more exaggerated examples, but that can happen, right? If it's affecting you significantly to the point where you're not able to do what you need to do to take care of yourself, sleep, eat, drink water, um, go to the bathroom, take a shower once in a while, you know? And you know when this is happening. 
because you know it's going too far. It's just a matter of allowing yourself to to accept that. If that's happening, that's when it's really important that you reach out for support because anxiety is one of the most, if not the most simple and easiest mental health conditions to treat. And not everybody needs medication to do it. Okay, so if it's affecting you so much where even you're going, this is getting a lot, or I can't shake these thoughts, or it's affecting your ability to let anybody watch your baby because you don't trust anyone and so you won't go anywhere, you won't do anything, you won't take showers, you won't step out of the house for 30 minutes, you won't even go check the mail because you don't want anyone else to watch the baby. Things like that, when that happens, listen to that inside voice. Listen to your gut saying, this something's different. I don't feel like myself. And that's okay. It's okay to admit that. There's nothing wrong with you if that's how you're feeling. There's nothing wrong with you. It does not make you a bad mom. It does not make you weak. It does not make you inept or incapable of taking care of this child. No way. No way. Postpartum anxiety is real. And it can happen to anyone. And it happens to a lot of women more frequently than postpartum depression. But you can get in control of it and you can get in control of it quickly so that you can enjoy your life as a mom to your amazing little miracle. Okay? Now, there's a wide variety of anxiety disorders. You know, disorders is really when the symptoms persist when they last for a long time, you know, several weeks and they're just not getting better or they're really severe and they're impacting your daily functioning. So not all postpartum anxiety is considered an anxiety disorder, right? It goes back to what I was saying earlier. Not all postpartum anxiety is pathological, quote unquote, in medical speak, right? So not ev- not all pa- postpartum anxiety is going to require a diagnosis by somebody or medication. It's on a spectrum, right? And then there's different types of anxiety disorder. So if you do qualify for an anxiety disorder, you you can experience postpartum anxiety disorder, postpartum obsessive compulsive disorder, postpartum panic disorder, postpartum generalized anxiety disorder. It's a variety of different types and that can be diagnosed and has to be diagnosed by a mental health professional. I do not recommend that you get that diagnosis or take any medication prescribed to you by your OB or your PCP. That is not their specialty. Their specialty is helping you get pregnant, stay pregnant, deliver your baby safely. And hopefully they're trained well enough to recognize red flags and signs to refer you out to a mental health specialist. Please, please, please do not go to your PCP, your your primary care provider, or your OB for medication for anxiety or for a diagnosis for anxiety that is not their specialty you you do not want to get into that with somebody who's not specialized in that it's like going to an eye doctor and asking them to perform open heart surgery on you it's like going to a neurosurgeon and asking them to perform IVF on you like this is not their specialty don't do it Please, please just save yourself the headache, the heartache, the money. Don't do it. Just get a referral to a licensed mental health specialist. That can be a licensed therapist, a licensed counselor, a licensed psychologist, or a licensed psychiatrist. Okay? Just wanted to make sure that we're clear about that. Now, again, I want to really be clear that if you are experiencing postpartum anxiety, whether it's just heightened anxiety than what you're used to or you have experience of the symptoms that could qualify for you and for qualify you for an anxiety disorder diagnosis or anything in between experiencing that anxiety does not mean you're crazy it does not mean that you're paranoid it's not something that you're making up It's not something that says anything about your ability to be a good mom or how well you're coping. 
I mean, you have experienced not only significant hormonal shifts after delivery, and this is not, I'm not just talking to women who delivered within, you know, a few days to a few months ago. Postpartum anxiety and similarly to postpartum depression, that can go on for up to five years after you've delivered your child. And this is especially true if you experienced a high-risk pregnancy or a preterm delivery or some kind of trauma around your birth or any combination of those things. Okay, so even if you have an older child, this can still apply to you. Okay, so sometimes it's the hormonal shifts that that make this possible and kind of set this set the anxiety in motion, okay? On top of that, if you have a brand new baby or a young toddler, you're not sleeping very well, then you've got, you're physically healing, especially if you delivered really recently, but you've also got all the memories from everything that you just went through. You still have the trauma of everything that you just went through, whether it was a high-risk pregnancy, a traumatic delivery, or a preterm birth, or any of the above. All of those things are sitting in your body and your body has not forgotten. So for a lot of those reasons, you are at risk for developing postpartum anxiety and all of those reasons are very legitimate. Postpartum anxiety is real and it does not say anything about you and your ability to be an amazing mother It affects more women than postpartum depression. It affects a lot of women. But you can get in control of it and you can get in control of it quickly so that you can enjoy being a mom to your little miracle because you deserve that. So what are the symptoms? What should you be looking for when it comes to postpartum anxiety? Well, like I said before, postpartum anxiety lies on a spectrum. And so what the severity of it, what you experience, it can be very different than the woman right next to you who's going through the same thing. Okay, so it's very individualized. So this is just a generic list. I would not use this as an end-all be-all. This is just a guide to get you thinking about it. But really, and this is I tell this to all the women that I talk to and I'm telling you today, if something concerns you and if you don't feel like yourself, Take it seriously. Okay? You deserve it. Take it seriously. Get the help that you need. Get it early. Get it quickly. And and then you're you're set, right? This doesn't have to follow you around like the cloud that has to follow Olaf around forever, right? This doesn't have to follow you around and you get to choose when to get rid of it. Okay, so here are some of the symptoms to watch out for. If you think you might be dealing with postpartum anxiety. And again, I want to repeat one more time. This is not just for women who delivered recently. Postpartum anxiety and what we would call postpartum anxiety can actually last for up to five years post-delivery, especially if you've been through trauma like a high-risk pregnancy, preterm delivery, or some kind of birth trauma. Okay? So... Common symptoms that women have, a lot of women have, something like feeling dread or feeling like something bad's going to happen. You kind of feel like maybe you're just waiting for the other shoe to drop. So when you get good news, you're like, okay, yeah, great, but where's the fallout from this? Okay. Or you're constantly worrying. Now, again, we've established mothers worry, right? Your mother worries, my mother worries, everybody's mother worries. And now that you're a mother, you worry. Worrying to an extent is a very common experience for motherhood. Worrying to the point where it's you can't take a break from it, where you can't stop thinking about it, where you're worried about absolutely everything and it's impacting decisions that you're making or how you get through your day, that's when you start to, that's when a little flag should go up going, huh, okay, maybe something's going on. Maybe this is not just, um, maybe this is not just a typical worry. This has gone a little bit farther than that. And stop yourself when you start judging yourself because I know you will because I know I did. 
We all judge ourselves. Stop yourself there. There's nothing wrong with recognizing that your anxiety is a little higher than it should be. Because all that's telling you is just get some extra help. Got to do something a little bit differently. And I'm going to go over that in a little bit, what that could be. It's just cluing you in that, hey, we need a little extra support here. And then you can you can move on from it. It's absolutely possible. Okay, so feeling dread or like something bad's going to happen, like the another like a sh- the other shoe's going to drop, that kind of feeling is one. Constantly worrying is another. Racing thoughts. You know, a lot of women that I talk to have that where you just can't fall asleep because your brain just will not stop thinking about anything. You're, and it's not just at, at night. It could be during the day. Your thoughts are just all over the place. You're thinking of 7,000 things at the same time. And it's not because you're busy. It's because your brain can't slow down. Okay. Or sleep disturbances or appetite disturbances. And now notice I say disturbances. What I mean is some people sleep less or eat less. But other people might sleep more or eat more than typical for them. So if anything changes on either side of it, that could be a clue that something's up. Okay. Feeling restless. That happens to me all the time when I get anxious. This is a big one for me, restlessness. My, if I'm sitting on a chair, I'm like shaking my leg up and down a ton, right? That happens to me a lot. Um, Or I can't sit at all and I'm having to pace the room. That happens a lot when we have, uh, my son gets sick in the winter. For him, his lungs are kind of his Achilles heel because of how early he was born. And so colds, typical colds that are just kind of like an annoyance for most kids are not like that for him. They're really big deal. So we go to urgent care. We have to go to the pediatrician. And I, until I know what his oxygen saturation is, even though I can see that he's breathing fine and his color is fine, I, uh, I get restless. I get restless and I can't, I'm just pacing or I'm, or I'm, uh, shaking my leg when I'm sitting down or I, I'm fidgeting, right? I've got something in my hand, just twirling a pen or I'm, uh, playing with something in my hand just cause I, I can't sit still. Okay. So that's another one. And then others are, are more physical in nature. For example, you could feel dizzy. You might have hot flashes. You might feel nauseous. That's a huge one for me. I get super nauseous. My stomach does not do well with anxiety at all. As soon as I start feeling anxious, even if my brain is like, no, I'm fine. I'm cool. It's not a big deal. But I get, I get nauseous and my stomach starts hurting. Um, so nausea or stomach pain is another one. Or you're feeling short, uh, short of breath um, because when we're anxious, we don't breathe properly, right? We're taking very quick, shallow breaths. And so you can feel like you're running out of breath. Uh, Recently, that actually happened to me. I was really anxious to get uh, blood work done. And I picked up the phone when the nurse called. And I, I, it sounded like I had just been working out because I was so short of breath. She's like, are you okay? You're breathing really fast. Like it was so obvious that she could hear it. So it happens. It happens. And if it happens once in a while, that's okay. That doesn't mean that anxiety is a huge problem for you. But if it's happening every day or if it is happening every time you go to the doctor or if it's happening every week consistently with the same kind of triggers or it's impacting your ability to live your life. And by live your life, I mean Anything from just taking care of yourself, the simple basic things, taking a shower, going to the bathroom, eating, drinking, resting, going out to check the mail, anything from there to being able to go to work and and everything in between, you know, if it's impacting you or if you're just getting this feeling like something feels different, I, I don't normally feel this way. This doesn't feel like me. Don't just chalk it up to hormones. Because likely it's so much more than that and it's your body's way of getting your attention. You know, this is, it's a really big deal because it can impact your ability to take care of your baby and it can impact your ability to actually be present for this life that you fought so hard for and you don't deserve that. Right? Postpartum anxiety is real. And it affects a lot of women. You are not alone in this. But you can get in control of it. And you can get in control of it 
quickly so you can really truly enjoy the life of being a mom to this little miracle that you have. Okay? So what do you do about it? What can you do? The good news is that though anxiety is the most common complication of childbirth over everything, and every time I ask this to people, they get really surprised. I ask, what's the most common complication of childbirth? And people think it's like hemorrhage or high blood pressure or stroke or something really scary like that. And it's not. It is not. It is anxiety. Postpartum anxiety is the most common complication of childbirth, very closely followed by postpartum depression. And then we get into the physical complications. Those two are right up there as one and two. The good news is that anxiety is extremely, extremely easy to manage when you've got the right tools. So here are a couple of things that you can try. Number one is you can try to do a calming, like body calming exercise. And it can be just as simple as putting on your timer for five minutes, going into your bedroom, lying down, and closing your eyes, and just paying attention to all parts of your body. You don't have to do anything fancy about it. You don't have to do any kind of progressive relaxation or anything. You don't have to do any kind of uh, breathing, like none of it. You can if you want to. And I'm happy to teach you more about how to do that. But let's start simple. Let's start simple and go into your room, put the timer on your phone for five minutes, lie down, and just scan your body. Start from the tip of your head and work all the way down to the tips of your toes and just make note of how your body feels. Now, why do I recommend this? I recommend this because you know how your thoughts are racing. You know when you're having negative thoughts. You know when your concerns feel a little outside of, okay, this is a little much to be worried about. You know that. We all know that, right? When you start imagining things that could go wrong, when you start imagining bad news coming to you, you know that to some extent, even though it feels very real, you know to some extent those thoughts are irrational, right? But stopping those thoughts isn't enough. And it's not going to be possible until you're able to reconnect with your body. This is where most people get anxiety management wrong. Anxiety keeps your body in a state of fear, right? It, it keeps your body in a state of fight or flight because it's trying to convince your brain there's danger. And if you've been through a high-risk pregnancy or a preterm delivery or traumatic birth or anything in, you know, any combination of that, you have seen danger. You've been there physically and your body hasn't forgotten that. And so your body's trying to remind your brain, hey, look, we're still there. We're, st- we're still there. And in the process, what happens is we disconnect from our body. And so we forget that there's anxiety that's rooted in our bodies that's coming out in our brains. It's a very long, complicated way of saying those negative thoughts that you're having, the racing thoughts that you're having, the worries that are presenting as negative thoughts or as imagining worst case scenarios, Though that's just a symptom of where anxiety actually resides, which is in your body. Which is why this exercise, just resting and scanning your body, is so important because you've got to get reconnected to your body. And it's a really great way to put pause on the thoughts that you're having because when you start getting reconnected to your body, when you start relaxing your body, that changes the message that goes to your brain of saying we're in danger. It changes that to, okay, I think we might be finding safety. And that is super, super important. So if you do anything today, if you do anything at all today, I would recommend that you do this. Five minutes. That can be when your kiddo is taking a nap It can be when your partner is watching your child. 
It can be when your child is at school, if you've got, or daycare, if you've got an older child. You can do this in your car on your lunch break if you are working already. Lie there five minutes, scan your body. That's all you have to do. Let's keep it simple. These exercises do not have to be complicated. You don't need complicated in your life. Okay? Once you've done that and that becomes a habit, this is not going to be a one and done deal, right? You've got to do this regularly. So once you can do this consistently, like daily for a week, then you can add in controlled breathing. Okay? So what you do is you do the five minutes, you turn on your timer on your phone, five minutes, you lie down in your car, on your sofa, on your bed, whatever it is, five minutes. And as you're breathing and as you're scanning your body, you breathe like this. In for four or five. Count to four or five as deep as you can go. Hold it for two seconds and breathe out for double what you breathed in. It is my absolute favorite way of breathing. It is massively powerful. It not only slows your breathing down, but it actually relaxes your body. And so if you're doing your, if you're scanning your body while you're doing this breathing, you will notice a massive shift in how your body feels. The goal of all of this is to pull anxiety out by its roots managing your thoughts is only addressing the symptom it is not addressing the root cause so if you connect to your body and you do this exercise and you do it regularly you start with just the body scan and I know some of you some of you guys who are like me and like to just go all in and start it all I don't want you to add the breathing in right away I know you're gonna want to and I know you're gonna be like she doesn't know what she's talking about I'm gonna try it anyway because I can handle it I can do it this is not about whether you can handle it, okay? And look, I, and I say this as somebody who probably would have done the same thing had I heard this myself. This is not about how much you can handle. This is not about how much you can do. This is not about taking, getting a quick solution and fixing this. And, you know, it's not like hiring a plumber and all of a sudden your faucet stops leaking and then it's done for, you know, the next six, nine months or forever, This is about creating a habit to undo the trauma that is causing the anxiety that you've been through. And that does not happen in one day. So please don't rush this. Please, please, please don't rush this. And trust me that if you do it in this order, that is when you're going to find the most relief as quickly as possible. Okay? So if you're recognizing that you're feeling anxiety... Take five minutes, put a timer on your phone, go lie down, and just scan your body. Do it once a day, if you can, for a week. If you can do it more than once a day, awesome. If you can't, don't even worry about it. Once a day for five minutes. If you can do it consistently once a day for five minutes, then add in the controlled breathing. In for four or five, hold for two, out for double. And you do this every single day. And the goal, again, is to change the message that your body is sending to your brain that we're in danger. And that is the start of how you're going to be able to manage your anxiety. Okay? And if you want to know more and you are super excited about doing, okay, this sounds awesome and I want to know what else I can do. I am all about... Let's make this as easy as possible. Let's make this as quick as possible for you. So I have a postpartum course, a postpartum healing course that is coming out very soon. And if you join now, you'll join the waitlist. And as a member of the waitlist, what you'll get is five-minute strategies on how to manage your postpartum anxiety. And they're my top seven favorite that you can get totally for free. Just head over to barijatdeshpande.com slash postpartum and add your name to the waitlist, and you will get access to the the seven my seven favorite five-minute strategies. None of them take more than five minutes because you don't have time. I know you don't. 
there's no point in asking you to sit there and meditate for 30 minutes because who has 30 minutes? My kiddo's four and I don't have 30 minutes. Like, I get it. There's no point in asking you to do that. So everything is extremely powerful. It is something that I have done myself. I've tried all of them. Many of them are ones that I still do to this day. They're extremely powerful and they're very short. Very, very helpful. So just head over to bariyajatdeshpande.com slash postpartum. And when you join the waitlist, you will get this free resource emailed directly to you right away. One last thing that I want to mention to you is that sometimes you may recognize that everything that you're doing, it's helping a little bit, but it's just not quite helping enough. And you're just not feeling like yourself. You're just not able to manage this anxiety on your own. You've tried everything and it just keeps coming back. It's not your fault. Number one, it's not your fault because it's not. I mean, it's really simple as that. It's not your fault because it's not. There's there's nothing about this that says that it's your fault. There are some women who will really benefit from seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. So if you're trying everything, if it's impacting your ability to get through your day, if you are doing whatever you can and it's just not helping, don't wait. You know, if this is going to help, it's not going to take more than two, three weeks for you to notice whether it's helping or not. If it's not helping enough or the way that you want, don't wait and just go get the help. Reach out to a therapist that's under, you know, covered under your insurance. There are plenty of postpartum coaches that you can even do online work with. There's online therapy options so you don't have to go anywhere because I know how hard that is when you have a little kid. Just reach out for help. Reach out and make sure that you get the support that you deserve because the sooner you can address this, the sooner you can get on with your life really enjoying it and really being present for it. Because postpartum anxiety is real. It's real and it says nothing about you and your abilities. It is so real. It affects so many women. But you can get in control of it and you can get in control of it quickly. So you don't miss a second, a single moment of your life with your little miracle. You deserve to be enjoying every second of it. You fought so hard for it and you deserve it. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you want more ideas on how you can manage your postpartum anxiety in five minutes or less, head over to bariyajatdeshpande.com slash postpartum and join the waitlist for my course that's coming out very soon. And for joining the waitlist, you will receive my free resource with seven of my favorite five-minute strategies that are super powerful at managing your anxiety that don't take any longer than five minutes. So head over to parijadeshbane.com slash postpartum and you can download that immediately. Also, I would love to stay in touch with you. So follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. My handle for all three is parijadesh. That's P-A-R-I-J-A-T-D-E-S-H. You've been through a lot so so much to bring this little miracle into your life and into the world you deserve to enjoy every second of it without having these worries and fears follow you everywhere you deserve it it's as simple as that you deserve it and you can feel that way i truly believe it take it one day one step at a time You can do this.